So I know you raised this program and I saw it online. Why did you want to do this Bahamian program? So a group of us were looking at ways of educating people about genomics. It, it's so important in the 21st century for health, for if you go shopping and buy vegetables, if you, you, know, if you, if you get sick. Uh, increasingly, the genetic information, genomic information, we need to be informed to, to make decisions for these various things, but there isn't really, it's called genetic, you know, genomic literacy. It, it's, it's understanding these uh, processes a lot better. It's um, training a new generation of people to deal with this huge amount of data um, it's not being scared of DNA. People here think about, you know, genetically modified organisms, you know, frankenfoods, things like this. So we wanted to come up with ways to make the process more transparent, educate people, train students. And um, thinking of various reasons, we looked at the Hong Kong flag and Hong Kong money and just thought, eh, this might be an interesting, um, an interesting uh, subject to look at. And the more we looked at the Hong Kong Bohemia, the more we realized it's got very strange history, very strange backstory, and some interesting scientific questions that could be answered as well. So we decided to pick Hong Kong's emblem to help inspire and train people in Hong Kong. We wanted to make the process just more transparent from beginning to end, show how much it costs, how the process works, um, and the things that you can discover from it as well, just to, you know, so people, people are not scared, they're, they're more informed and, and uh, also trained to training students to actually potentially work on it in the future, you know, inspiring a new generation of scientists. Um, so science, there isn't that much science journalism and science TV in, in Hong Kong, um, and, you know, plant genetics, it sounds quite, I don't know, some people might think it's boring and, 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 and a bit, you know, different to what normally gets covered in, in, on Hong Kong news. You know, people are very interested in fashion and politics and, and you know, the stock market and things like this. Science is, is not, not a very big area. But um, promoting this, we managed to get um, uh, plant genetics on the front cover of the South China Morning Post. On the Sunday, the Sunday magazine, we had the Bohin, like the Bohinia DNA on the on the cover. Um, we went to lots of schools. The school kids were asking so many questions. You could, you, it was like um, um, you couldn't stop them. They were like so interested. We managed to get Bohinia onto. Um, we were talking about uh, flowers and genetics on CNN, and um, even it was on BBC BBC Earth. So. Um, you know, it, it, we did manage to get a, a, a lot of exposure for this, but you know, we keep, we have to keep promoting this. Still talking to more schools and, and looking at kind of mm -hmm. school programs, and it's great to, to talk about this on Shenzhen TV as well. <laughs> okay. The Hong Kong Bohemia, Bohemia Blakeyana, is the one that uh, is highlighted here as, as the Hong Kong Bohemia. Um, but it was uh, discovered about 130 years ago in Hong Kong on um, Pok Fu Lam near HKU, a French horticulturalist and missionary called Jean-Marie de Lave. He was one of the world's top experts in, in kind of discovering new plants, propagating plants. And um, yeah, he was in Hong Kong for, for a short period of time going for a walk and he discovered this beautiful, this beautiful flower. Um, and it was producing lots of flowers, very bright. Uh, he realized it was, it was special because they knew Bohemia flowers, but this one was producing lots of flowers and it, um, for more than half of the year, it produces flowers. That's because it's a hybrid and the uh, other, other Bohemia species, they only produce flowers for a couple of months of the year and then they put all of their efforts into producing seeds and propagating. And so he realized this one was really beautiful. He took cuttings um, to, so he, he, he knew how to propagate these things. He took some cuttings to the Hong Kong Botanic Gardens and then they just propagated them all from there. And he also took some to, because his mission was in, uh, was in mainland China in, in, uh, in Guangzhou. And so he took some to his mission. And so all of the Bohemia flowers that you see, 
all, all of the Hong Kong bohemian oak flowers that you see are clones. They're the, the original, the same plant that he collected 130 years ago um, that have gone either to the Botanic Gardens or to, um, to Guangzhou. So they're all ancestors of this. And for a century, people didn't know the, the origins, like how this existed, why it, why it existed, why it was infertile. And um, so about 10 years ago, um, uh, scientists at HKU and CUHK started to study the, the origins. And they proposed that these two other species, um, uh, Bohemia variegata, and uh, Bohemia purpurea are likely, from studying single genes, um, likely the, the, the two parents that must have crossbred. Um, but these are still only single gene studies, so having the genome will let us know that 100% definitively that like these, we think they're the, the parents, but one of the goals of this project is to, to prove that, figure out who mummy and daddy Bohemia is. So, so yeah. who mummy and daddy is that? Um, yeah, they're we just together, or they, they don't actually father mother. It's just, they just together. So somehow they manage to breed. Like they, they, the, these two Bohemia species, they flower at different times of the year. Although they overlap in January, so in a short period of time, the two, the flowers, flowering season overlaps. So somehow, just by a complete fluke, they one managed to breed and produce infertile seeds. So. Um, yeah, it happened once, though maybe it's happened multiple times. Maybe, you know, studying the genome, we'll be able to see if this was a single event, a multiple event, potentially figure out which one was the mother, which one was the father. Um, this is all, these are all kind of scientific questions we're hoping to, to answer. And studying hybrids is actually um, really challenging and really important because most of, our, most of the crops that we eat are, are hybrids. Um, a wheat. The discovery of wheat 11,000 years ago is one of the most important events in civilized, you know, in kind of human civilization. It was one of the key uh, things that drove, you know, agriculture, you know, becoming agricultural societies. Um, most, yeah, most of the crops that we eat are, are, you know, similar strange hybrids, but they're very, they have very difficult genomes to study. Um, so actually developing techniques to study these better and more easily are, are, are very useful for, for food security. If you, can, if you can get good at studying these plant uh, hybrid genomes, cancer research is easy in comparison. So it's, they're very good. it's a very good example to actually train people and improve the way we do genome assembly as well. So we wanted to prove that um, without government funding, without kind of, uh, you know, um, big external funders, rich people, that we want to show that the public with not, you know, huge amounts of money can produce a, a basic, geno you know, a basic kind of genome, gene catalogue, show some of the things that you can get from having this genomic information, having this genetic information, answer some interesting scientific questions about the origins of this mysterious flower, um, maybe look at some of the uh, compounds that people have seen in other behinias that, um, for example, they use it in Indian medicine. Um, there's been work on antibacterial activity of some of the compounds in behinia flowers. Do a you know, small amount of um, early, early work on that. We want to show that this is possible with students and that students in, in Hong Kong can actually make a, you know, create a genome. And, um, and they, yeah, ma master students here at Chinese University, they've kind of got close to that stage now. So it'll be, yeah, it's, it's really nice to see that, that we managed to do this. Talking about the medical uses of uh, Bahamian, yeah. you mentioned Indian people. Yeah. Actually, I saw some reports that in some Indian people think that Bahamian can use in medical way. Yeah. Is it actually true? And are we still studying in this kind of area? So one of the uh, things that the uh, team at uh, Chinese University of Hong Kong are doing are looking at the looking at the gene catalog, looking at the genes, and looking at ones potential with potentially medical properties. 
uh, Indian traditional Indian medicine, um, Ayurvedic medicine, they actually use um, bahinia for treating um, diarrhea, sort of a, a few different um, diseases. So we would like to see if if any of the compounds are useful. Um, and there has been um, a lot of research on a, a few compounds in bahinia for um, attacking microbial biofilms. So. Uh, bacteria will grow on surfaces, um, you know, potentially infectious, nasty bacteria. And so um, there's some compounds in Bohemia that uh, people in laboratory studies, not taking it into the field and stuff, but have seen that it helps kill bacteria in these, ba in these biofilms. So people have done it on, their, on some other Bohemia species, but nobody's done it on the, nobody's looked at the version from Hong Kong Bohemia. So this is this potentially interesting work there.